Hi Sam, this is Coach Smart from ABC Baseball Camps. I'm here to do your video evaluation. Um, I guess there were some issues why, why this took so long. I apologize for that, but we'll get right going here and see what we uh, can do to help you out here a little bit. So let's talk about your setup. Uh, first thing I see in your setup is you've got a nice wide stance, which is good. I like that. Um, from where your hands are, that's I don't know issues with where you have your hands, how high they are. When you get to this position here, oops, that's too far. Let's go back one here. When you get there, I mean, for most guys, it'd be better if they were a little bit higher, I guess, kind of maybe even with your ear hole of your helmet. But uh, that's not that big a deal. The thing I'm most concerned about, Samuel, is your front foot. And the angle that you allow that to get to before contact. Okay, your <clears throat> your front foot should look just like your back foot is right now. Okay, the longer that you can stay square to home plate, Samuel, throughout your swing, the more balls you're going to square up. Okay, the way we create energy in our swing, the way we create power, more bat speed, is by doing something you do very well you drive that back knee very well but the problem is is you drive that knee down to into nothing your front side opens up so all the power you're generating gets released out to the front end of your swing because you're not hitting against anything your back knee is textbook it's really good your back leg is really good you have the you have a chance to create a lot of power there a lot of energy there but by allowing that front foot to slide open and allowing the weight of your front foot to get on the outside part of your foot you lose the ability to resist and create resistance we create power by creating resistance from our backside to our front side the same thing as when we throw we throw against our front arm which is built up against our front side there we throw against that front side to create resistance to create more power so as far as you where you are at contact by letting that front foot open up it also um, gets you in a position where the only pitch you're going to be able to hit really is a ball in the inner half or right down the middle anything on the outer half you'll have a difficult time driving the other way because your chest, your core, is facing the pitcher before contact. In a contact bud, I want your chest to be facing a shortstop. You have to remember, we're going to rotate our back hip against our front hip. We're not going to let both hips go. Our back hip rotates against our front hip. And against that firm, closed front side okay um, but your finish is good you get pretty good extension you're a little bit pull happy it looks like there on that extension okay but from a standpoint of your just your swing let's move this up a little bit and I think he took that pitch so you're playing your swings pretty good you're level through the contact zone but you get you know you're gonna lose a lot of power again with that front foot opening up like that one other thing I would I would uh, that I don't care for as a hitting instructor is striding to your toe you stride to your toe and then you're as a ball approaching home plate you drop that foot to the ground and when you do that your eyes bounce up and down too your head should remain relatively flat you know until you're you know, your head should be about the same level and it kind of drops down as your as that foot hits and that right before the ball gets there and that's a that's a tough combination from the standpoint of hitting goes okay so make sure that uh, the head remains quiet let's flip you over and look at your right-handed swing okay I've watched this a couple of times I see that toe in the air and it's kind of the same thing here we're gonna put this bar on your head and as that ball approaches, boy, your head's going to drop down and sink down, you know, quite a bit. 
and that's just going to be tough as you start facing more velocities you get older and face tougher competition your left-handed swing looks more balanced than your right-handed swing I think you get a little wider in your right-handed swing you're a little more narrow than you are in your left-handed swing and we go back to the same thing with that with your front foot bud you let it slide open you let the weight that you're you're pushing down with your backside get to the outside part of your left foot or your front foot instead of your the inside part of your foot I want to drive that knee down like this to the inside part of your foot not to the outside part of it okay um, that's uh, you have a better chance of creating resistance again from a swing standpoint you know let's watch you here at contact right-handed okay same kind of thing you're your chest and and your core is facing the pitcher right now right at contact and you should be facing the second baseman from the right handed side okay it just it gets you to a just to a, a position where you're going not going to be able to handle enough pitches on a consistent manner to be you know to be where you want to get to from a baseball standpoint you're just going to be looking at being able to hit the inside pitch so maybe the ball down the middle but anything out the you know over the outside half of the plate you're going to have a tough time driving it the other way okay so one drill you can do to help get a feel for that a couple drills you can do to get a feel for that Samuel one is a, a drill we call dead legs we're going to get about put that back foot right about there leave your front foot where it is but keep your feet on the ground and you can do either soft toss or T work this way no load no stride your feet stay on the ground and you just swing with your hands and not rotate your hips okay when scouts come out to watch you play they're looking for guys with fast hands not guys that can spin really hard on a baseball okay so we want you to get used to swinging your bat with your hands and not your shoulders and not your hips now we use that same idea when we hit now we just integrate our lower half to our swing and now we can stay on pitches longer okay, the second drill is called a split drill where you take your back foot and put it back here in kind of a scissors action and again no load or stride but you can go ahead and drive your knee down we do this drill a split drill and it helps keep that front hip and front shoulder intact through your swing because when you swing you'll watch that front hip when your front foot opens up so does your front hip which is going to open up that front shoulder right away too so like I said the good news is you really only have really one serious issue to take care of and that's that front foot what I would do what I do with my hitters that that problem is stick a heavy object in front of where your foot's going to land for your stride and and then you kind of get some muscle memory to keep that foot closed and really emphasize trying to stay inside your front foot don't get to the outside part of it Samuel I'm gonna put my email address on here if you have any questions about your evaluation or any questions about your swing feel free to email me and I'll help you okay so have a great Thanksgiving have a great holidays and I look forward to seeing you at the next ABC baseball camp